We truly are living in an extraordinary time. And many people forget this. The fact of the matter is the world has been getting better at an extraordinary rate. And that technology has been the mechanism for turning scarcity into abundance. We have access to artificial intelligence, robotics, new materials, distributed manufacturing. It's the democratization of the ability to touch a billion lives, change the world, that gives me the greatest hope for the future. Today, the world's biggest problems, the biggest problems on the planet, are the world's biggest market opportunities. Point. Right? So you can do well and do and do, good. And do great. <laughs> When an asteroid came closer to Earth than one had ever come before, Peter Diamandis saw it as a celestial call to action. He tweeted out that asteroids are nature's way of asking, so how's that space program of yours going? I have described Peter Diamandis as one of the smartest people in the world. Trained at both MIT and Harvard, Peter is a doctor, an innovator, and an entrepreneur. And he's helping push our earthly limits with a number of leading space companies, including Space Adventures, Zero Gravity Corporation, and Planetary Resources. He's also the driving force behind the X Prize, a group with which I'm closely involved. It offers incentive prizes for radical breakthroughs that benefit humanity. For instance, in 2004, the Ansari X Prize awarded 10 million dollars to the team that first succeeded in sending a manned craft into space twice within a two-week period. That gave birth to what is now a vibrant commercial space industry. In 2010, the Wendy Schmidt Oil Cleanup X Challenge used 1.4 million dollars in award money to more than triple the industry standard rate of the removal of oil from water following the devastating Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Peter has founded two universities, the International Space University and most recently, the Silicon Valley-based Singularity University. And like pioneers through the ages, the guy's an optimist. In a world where headlines regularly portend doom, he titled his New York Times bestseller, Abundance, The Future is Better Than You Think. The book was voted Fortune's top book for 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my good friend, Peter Diamandis. Today we're living in a world which is best described as, you know, global and exponential. Not only has life changed century to century, decade to decade, it's changing year to year. Now look at this curve. This is Moore's Law over the last hundred years. I want you to notice two things from this curve. Number one, how smooth it is. Through good time and bad time, wartime and peacetime, recession, depression, and boom time. Eleven years from now, the average $1,000 computer is going to be calculating at the rate of 10 to the 16th cycles per second, which is just a number unless you talk to a neurophysiologist who will tell you that's the rate at which the human brain does pattern recognition. But wait, there's still more. 25 years later, the average $1,000 laptop is computing at the rate of the entire human race. Another technology that's important to understand is called digital manufacturing, 3D printing. These are becoming small desktop devices that can be in every home, in every lab, in every store, literally to be able to print with plastic, with glass, with titanium, with human cells. You're building complex structures. Now again, these technologies, I want you to think about them available to anyone, anywhere on the planet. Artificial intelligence is going to transform everyone's industries this decade. Imagine, if you would, AIs like this on the cloud, available to every person with a cell phone. These devices, these smartphones, these tablets, these connected devices are going to be a means of health and education. Life is becoming a programming language where you can actually sit down like you would a computer and program a life form, an algae, a bacterium, whatever it might be, to produce the exact fuels you want or the proteins you want. You know, we don't have to accept what life has given us. You can make improvements on it. We're going from literally evolution by natural selection to evolution by intelligent direction. So I talk about the first tool that I used to help me solve my problem, and that's incentive competitions. See, I read one day about this guy, Charles Lindbergh, that he crossed the Atlantic in 1927 to win a $25,000 prize. The audacity of his act, the heroism of his act, 
It changed the way people thought. The first X Prize, you might remember, was a $10 million competition that challenged teams around the world to build private spaceships that could carry three adults up into space twice in two weeks. And incredibly, that $10 million prize drove 26 teams from seven countries around the world to spend $100 million to try and win this $10 million competition. These are the hallmarks of an incentive competition. You get 10 to 40 times the money you put up spent to try and win your prize. You only pay the winner. It's efficiency of capital. You spark not a single solution, but an entire industry, right? You have one winner, but a dozen companies are created to move that forward. That competition was won in October of 2004 by Burt Rutan, backed by Paul Allen, and launched over a billion dollar industry. And today, any of you can travel on a flight into space. And now the winning vehicle, Spaceship One, is hanging in the center of the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum right above the Apollo 11 capsule and next to the Spirit of St. Louis that inspired it in the first place. How cool is that, huh? Thank you. When I go out there and talk about this, and I say to groups of people like yourself, we're heading towards a world of abundance. People look at me and go, really? I mean, haven't you heard about the financial crisis in Europe and the terrorist activities here? How can you possibly be talking about a world of abundance? And it hits me that, ladies and gentlemen, there's a problem here. You see, the news media is a drug pusher. And negative news is their drug. And every device that you have, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your smartphone, on your tablet, your radio, your television, newspaper, you get this negative news delivered 24 by seven, over and over and over again. But let me show you the facts. You see, over the last 100 years, we've been living during an extraordinary age. The human lifespan has more than doubled. The per capita income for every nation on this planet has more than tripled. The cost of food has come down 13-fold, energy 20-fold, transportation 100-fold, communications over 1,000-fold. We talk about energy scarcity. But ladies and gentlemen, we're living on a planet 5,000 times more energy hits the surface than we consume as a species in a year. It's there, just not yet accessible, but technology is changing that. A Maasai warrior on a cell phone in the middle of Kenya has better mobile comm than President Reagan did 25 years ago. And if they're on a smartphone on Google, they've got access to more knowledge and information than President Clinton did 15 years ago. By 2020, we're going from 2 billion to 5 billion people. 3 billion new minds are plugging into the global conversation. These are 3 billion new minds who will create, discover, produce, help solve our world's problems. They represent tens of trillions of dollars being plugged into our global economy. They represent your next generation of customers or your customers' next generation of customers. They also represent, for me, literally the beginning of the greatest period of innovation this planet has ever seen. The question is, when you're looking to solve the world's biggest problems, where do you find the solutions? Because sometimes the expert is the person who can tell you exactly how it can't be done. Literally, a group of students can touch the lives of a billion people today. 30 years ago, that would have sounded ludicrous. Today, we can point at dozens of companies that have done just that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a day and age where we have the ability to solve the world's biggest problems. There is nothing we cannot do. There is technology coming online, not 10, 20 years from now, right now. We have the technology, we have the passion, we have the minds. The most critical tool in solving all the grand challenges is the passionate and persistent human mind. A dream has come true for me today. I have made a commitment before I came this weekend, so this week, that I was going to dedicate my life's work to getting your message out, because this book changed my life. We are living into an extraordinary decades ahead. Thank you.